Okay, so we're back at the official Digimon, world.digimoncard.com website right here. This is a bit of a surprise because Ben and I last week announced that they're going to have this updated announcement on a ban of restricted list. And here it is today on December 18th. I will include the link to this particular page in the description box down below and in the comments. So definitely be sure to check that out for your own reference. But there are definitely quite a bit of hits that are kind of surprising. A lot of things to talk about, which is really interesting. And I did take a quick glance over it, but you know, here over, I haven't really read too much and go into detail. So we're just going to go through and sort of like, you know, give my opinion and my insight as well on what their suggestions is. This is a little bit interesting to start off because it's actually for us in the English card game is effective on March 1st, 2024 of next year. That's basically like two and a half months or even like three months away from now, which is quite a bit. And it's actually the first time we've seen Bandai actually hit a certain amount of cards that we ev that we haven't even gotten yet, which is pretty crazy. Uh, but now, as for you guys who are playing the Japanese format, you guys are getting this list way earlier. And the list is exactly the same when it comes to the cards, which I'm pretty sure. And But you guys are getting it like basically in a couple weeks, which is January 5th. So you guys are Japan Japanese players, just make sure you check on that one. This is only applicable for English only. So down here at the bottom, restricted cards to one copy. These are the cards that you can only have one copy in your deck and you can't have more of that. And the first one we already got right here is actually the BT-14 Bukamon. And I'm actually kind of surprised, but also not so surprised because I think this card is just really, really good. And BT-14 is basically a set we recently just got too, basically a month ago. And already this card's already being hit, but I can tell you a very good reason why. So let's quickly look at what Bandai has to say. They said because this card's grant jamming very easily, fulfilling the conditions, gives very great consistency to all, all other blue digi eight cards, and it's more spe supposedly to be more specialized, but every basically everyone is just playing this digi eight card at this moment, and as a result, uh, because mainly blue decks are using this now, they want to restrict it down to one. It, it's really true, because if you guys watched any of my mo more recent sort of like blue um, related like deck profiles other than Imperial Jamon because it has inheritable like inherently jamming itself. Like any other blue deck like All Force, Mirage Gal, Blue Hybrid, and there's a whole bunch of like, even if you were playing uh, Gomamon and Plesiomon itself, you know, this is basically one of the best blue digi A cards ever. For something to give inheritable, even though it has a stipulation and condition, it is actually really easy to meet, honestly. It's not hard at all. It's essentially a free jamming right off the board. And that really just compensates and just makes blue decks infinitely better because then all of them don't have to be worried. All of them are basically jamming now. Jamming is more of a thing that's sort of unique, right? Like Imperial should only have it because, you know, it's more unique to that archetype and then maybe to some other few other archetypes and so on, right? But now that every single blue deck's running it, especially the big stack ones, you know, you can even even make an argument that blue Melgar that run this is just really, really strong, right? Because then you have built in again inheritable jamming, it's just way too good. But yeah, I, I'm, I can kind of see that coming. Um, this is probably a really good choice, even I would agree. So just because like everyone's playing this egg now, all the other eggs are forgotten, basically. You know, nobody plays Wanyamon, nobody one plays Ukamon. Although I think Wanyamon would be the second one best one to go now. But you can still at least run one copy, which is kind of neat because they still give you a bit of that, uh, I guess, potential if you're strong enough to, you know, good enough to God stack someone, which is absolutely uh, insane sometimes too. But anyways, that's Pokemon it is. But now we're moving into a card that we don't even have yet, which is BT15 Apoclemon. Now, I haven't really played this particular card or this deck to really like experience it myself from first hand, but... It is very evidential in the community, even in Jap Japan, like everyone's been talking about this card and this deck itself is just really oppressive. Um, let's quickly read what they say. If you can send cards with Dark Masters traits to the trash even once, this card can be played multiple times easily and for low cost depending on the number of copies. With combined cards such as Craniumon, it makes it extremely difficult to deal with. Okay, that's understandable. I think, you know, you turbo your trash very quickly. You use your trash as your resource. It's almost like digi-crossing in a way, I believe. And in addition, 
there is no cost activating the deck trashing effect, and the number of cards trashed at the time is considerable, making it difficult to deal with for decks and cannot utilize the trash. So this card limits the number of deck types that can compete in the environment, and for the above reasons, they decide to restrict this card down to one. Yeah, and, and you know, I've talked to some of my friends that play in the Japanese format, and this this deck is not fun to play against. This deck is almost like very uh no you know like uninteractive. Um, the opponent basically comes up with this Apocalypse, really strong, put in a bunch of like stuff underneath and gain all their like effects. You know, with the Craniumon BT thirteen makes it like base un, un, indestructible almost, uh, which is has which is like basically protection. And yeah, I can kind of see that too. But then, because you sit there and you just mill your opponent out, like milling strategy is actually nice and unique. But having such a powerful Digimon that you can't even answer or deal with, and have it mill you out while at the same time, where the opponent doesn't have to literally do anything, it's really not that healthy for the game, which I can kind of see and understand. And this is actually a little controversial. There's a lot of debate and topics because I know in my previous ban list predictions I talked about before. You know, usually it's not a very wise business decision to hit something that's a secret rare, right? That's the whole idea why we talked about they actually decide to hit Eismon Scatter Mode, which we'll talk about more a little bit earlier later on. But the whole purpose of hitting Scatter Mode was so that they actually want to hit this engine indirectly without hitting the secret rare, which makes a lot of sense. But even without Scatter Mode, that's what I'm hearing, is the deck can still function fine. Basically, it was untouched. It didn't do anything to it. It kind of still just operated the same way, but they just play a different engine to get there. And it's just equally as fast, maybe a little bit slower, but otherwise, yeah, that's what I heard. Um, and because of that, like also a secret rare card is usually a, a major hit, right? It's really the determined factor of whether you want to buy multiple boxes or just one box and whatnot. You know, this can affect, you know, their business decision in terms of sales quite a lot. And it, it will affect it when it comes to BT15 around, because I know some of you guys might be buying fewer boxes now because you don't need four copies of Apocalypse anymore. This card is restricted down to one. I don't think it was ban worthy, but I think restricting it down to one is okay. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe if it comes out, it's really like, hope, like there's no way to deal with it. I'm not sure. I will have to see by then. But I think this is also an, a good sign that Bandai is actually listening to us as a community. They understand the feedback and people are mentioning this a lot, I believe that this card needs to be hit. And I think, you know, it's, it's a tough decision. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, you know, I'm trying to play devil's advocate being on both sides as fair as possible. It's hard for Bandai to actually just ban this card outright too. Not ban, but like even to restrict it down to one because it is a secret word at the end of the day. You know, you imagine by the time when the set comes out, you're opening multiple boxes and you pull multiple of these, you really don't need them. So yeah, but it's gonna be interesting. Let me know what you guys think in the in, in the comments down below based on this one. But this is very, very early on to say. But again, it's not effective until uh, March 1st, uh, which I believe is basically when around that time of the set that comes out, I believe. Actually, it's basically the moment it comes out, I think, if I'm not wrong. Now, this next one, a lot of people are talking about this already. Um, surprisingly, for first, the Gabumon X Antibody Engine from EX5 needs to be hit too. Now... This doesn't affect any of us that are playing in the North American Nationals coming up in January because again, this is going to be March 1st. So very clearly that this engine and this deck is still going to be remain the way it is. I, I find it really interesting if they actually hit it prior to that, but I also don't think it's a great idea because it really, really would uh, hinder and like really make it worse uh, for their product uh, because then, you know, what's the point of getting EX5 now, right? So at least we're still... You know, getting EX5, we still want to buy multiple copies of EX5 because we want to build this Goblin X. But after that, after Nats, as soon as that comes around, and maybe a little bit in the beginning season of next year, this card is basically gone. Now, White Goblin specifically. In Garumon deck, this card offers both higher consistency and speed than other cards, which is true. In addition, this card's inherited effect grants a protection effect, making it difficult for opponents to respond from the beginning of the game. As a result, it's little reason to use for other cards and because of the importance of this card is so great for above reasons they decide to restrict it down to one this is a great card it's a searcher on play when digivolving three cost even though it might cost one to digivolve on top of an egg but you're usually digivolving for zero on top of a gobamon if not you just hard play it to search and it's inheritable for level three is relatively too strong it's 
like Agumon X from BT11, but even better because all turns once per turn, when this Digimon is like Gurumon or Omnimon and its name would be deleted by battle specifically, you just need to return two non-Digi-8 cards from your trash to the bottom of your deck to protect it. And it goes on further uh, as we go see, as we see the other evolution line too, because you can build double protection. And being able to build double battle protection does make it very hard for decks to actually overcome the Gurumon stack, and they're just way too strong because of that. And again, it has searching consistency. This kind of made like Gabu X from BT9 obsolete completely. Like nobody plays that at all, even because of how good it is. Not on, not to mention, it's also like double color too, which is pretty insane. Now for the next hit, it's definitely the Digivolution version, Garumon X Antibody. It essentially does the same thing when it comes to Inheritable, which is why I was talking about double protection early on. Like you're gonna have to hit that Digimon three times. And how often do you get to hit a Digimon three times, right? I can only imagine like War Greymon, maybe if you're able to combo with Bloom Lord, maybe, I don't know. I Yeah, by battle, it's, it's good, you know, it's basically jamming too. So this card alone allows altering one's hand to great degree and offers greater consistency than it's reasonable for decks that it can use. In addition, this card can use by not only Garum on decks, it also utilizes any decks that has trashing components. As a result, there's little reason to use it in other cards, and because of the importance of this card is so great, they decide to restrict it to one. That's the exact same reason as Gobblemon. It's actually crazy. Like this deck, uh, this core engine can be played in Bill Star. Even I, I noticed. I actually even saw like an O Force build with this bo bottom engine, and that's really not what you, you want to see, right? When you play O Force, you want to play the O Force package. You want to play the O Force engine, for example, and you kind of want to keep Gurumon to its own archetype. But you know, playing Gurumon in Apocalymon, which I pr probably know, playing it maybe as like with Bill on top end, playing as the Gurumon deck itself, and then playing in Bill Star and many others. You know, you don't want to turn all purple decks into a Gurumon engine. So I think it makes a lot of sense to hit this. And I know, again, it's very early to say, maybe they could have saved this banless announcement a little bit later, but, you know, I think a lot of us saw it coming. And if you guys remember that around this time last year, we kind of knew that the BT11 Greymon X Antibody, the one that is red and black and can reduce Digivolution costs, effectively making some of your Metal Greymons one cost only, or even just two cost to Digivolve, it's kind of the same concept, but this one lets you draw and trash cards and you gain that memory back, which essentially does the same thing, you know, but then it's just worded a little bit differently. So yeah, for that reason, makes a lot of sense. Now here, 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 if Garurumon and Gabumon is getting hit so much, we know for sure Anubismon is one of the most hyped decks coming up, especially again in a national Nats format. This card is absolutely insane with the things it can actually do. You know, it has when did evolving main once per turn effects, letting you play stuff back from trash with reduced cost, which is like for, almost for free. And then you also get to delete your opponent's Digimon at level five or lower, which is not once per turn either. And if you didn't, you get to draw a card. So you're always getting value no matter what with this brand new Anubismon. And this EX5 Anubismon, again, EX5 is going to be a big set because it changes a lot of things. There's a lot of strong decks that are being introduced in there. And, it, and again, Anubismon is going to be one of the top tier contenders for the next format, 100%. So let's see what they say. This card has high board retention and control due to its continuous play and removal effects, exactly what we just read. Greatly improves the consistent speed of decks when combined with several other existing cards. There are very few deck types that can handle the speed. And currently, this card reduces space for choosing other deck themes with similar board expansion effects, limiting the diversity that you can choose. For the above reason, decide to restrict this card down to one. And yeah, again, myself, I haven't really played a Nubismon just yet, but just by reading the effect and just by hearing from what people are saying uh, and talking about, again, for Nats and all that kind of stuff, and, you know, when the next set comes in in the X5, like, this card is really, really busted. Even for the four cost of Digivolve, it's, it's basically nothing. You know, you, you gain memory back as you're Digivolving through your stack as well anyways. And then you have like, you know, training boost, like training cards, you have memory boost cards, you know, you're always just netting very, very positive. So that basically just wraps up the entire uh, five cards that are hit in one single day. And most of them being in advance, which is really crazy. Uh, actually, all of them being in advance. So we still get to enjoy Pokemon a little bit. But here comes in a little bit of discussion because I did mention about Eismon earlier with Apocalymon, you know, Eismon. What do you guys think? Do you guys think it's a problem? Should Eismon stay in the list? Should it actually come off immediately? 
Like, I know a lot of Purple players really, really like the Eismon package, which is a very, very good core engine package, right? With scattered mode and everything. So maybe it can come off. I'm not entirely sure, but I kind of understand that Bandai wants to like wait and see a little bit and see how things shift and how, you know, how the game turns out. And then I believe they'll make modifications as we go. But no cards that are coming off the list this time. If you guys feel like if there's any particular card that's on the list from prior should actually come off, comment down below as well. But yeah, that's basically wrapping it up. Um, I'm pretty surprised in a way where we're, you know, getting to see a list this soon, like basically two times in the whole year. Although again, this is way more advanced than, uh, you know, way more advanced notice than we anticipated anyways. But yeah, there's going to be a lot of changes. It's interesting. I, I for sure overall, you know, I'm okay with this list really just because, you know, we don't want to play an oppressive meta where everything's the same thing and, 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 and really, really strong, like, you know, over there what Japan had. And I know like Japan had a lot of issues too, you know, having, you know, things not really affecting them. But anyways, I digress on that part. So yeah, if you guys haven't done so yet, be sure to check out the Evolt store right now with the Winter Zero collection and all the new stuff on there. We still have sales going on. They're going to be gone by the end of the year. So you definitely don't want to miss out. Definitely go on, hop on there right away. And yeah, check it out. And I appreciate all the support. But yeah, once again, comment down below what you guys think. Give this video a like. Make sure to subscribe for more if you guys want to see more. And like, like always, and as always, you guys have a great day great night wherever you are see you next video and this is about signing